there is no other God like you. We give you all the glory. We give you all, all the glory the belongs to you. All the honor belongs to you. We worship you. Father, we worship your name. You are worthy to be. We give you all. to share the word this morning. Hallelujah. I want us to turn to our Bibles in the book of John 15. Today will be more, more teaching than preaching. John 15. I'll read several verses in different books. We'll start with John 15. 12 to 13. John 15, 12 to 13 says, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Let's move forward to Romans 12. Romans 12, 13 to 15. Romans 12, 13 to 15 says, Distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them 
that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Hallelujah. Then let's turn to Galatians. I've told you today we are studying. We are not in preaching alone. Galatians 6, verse 2 to 3, it says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinks think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Then number four says, But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he rejoice, shall, shall have, and let's, let's, let's repeat that, but let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. Hallelujah. Then we finish with Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19, 17 to 18 says, He that has pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he has given will he pay him again. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his cry. Hallelujah. Bwana siwe saa. Asubuya leo ningependa kuzungumzia juu ya kuwa baraka moja kwa mwingine. Being a blessing to one another. To be a blessing to one another means that we need to care for one another. We need to pray for one another. We need to cherish one another. We need to be there for one another. Mwana siwe sana. Mimaji ya kawimba kasema, naomba ni baraka kwa wengine. Ili niweze kwa kweza na kuwa inua. Mwana siwe sana. Na kuwa baraka kumoja kwa mwingine, ndiyo guzo na ndiyo sababu kuu ambayo tumeokoka. Hallelujah. Tumeokoka ili tukatembe pamoja kama wapendo. Tumeokoka ili tukaweza kubebeana mizigo. Bwana asifiwe sana. Na kama Mkristo ni jukumu lako kubebeana mizigo na kujua jinsi mwenzako anavyoendelea. Haleluya. Tusiwe wa Kristo wale tu wa kuonana na kusema sijui mali yupo, sijui anaendeleaje, tuwe watu wa kubebeana mizigo. Haleluya. Kwa sababu Mkristo ni ule tabia zake ni za Kristo mwenyewe. Haleluya. Wa Kristo wa, wa, wa kwanza walito wa Kristo kwa sababu walitazama na wakaona tabia zao ni kama tabia za Kristo. Tabia ya Kristo ilikuwa ni tabia ya upendo. Tabia ya, ya Kristo ilikuwa ni tabia ya kujali watu. Tabia ya Kristo ilikuwa ni tabia ya uombezi na, na kubebea watu mizigo. Tabia ya Kristo ilikuwa ni tabia ya kuleta tumaini na matumaini katika maisha ya watu. Kwa hivyo kuwa baraka kwa mwingine lazima tukaweze kuleta matumaini. Tukaweze kuleta ubadiliko ama mabadiliko juu ya maisha wale wengine. Bwana asifiwe sana. So as I have said a Christian is someone whose behavior and the heart reflects Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Someone whose behavior and the heart reflects Jesus Christ. Kwa hivyo kama tabia zako azimwonyeshi Kristo basi kuna kasa. Kama roho yako aionyeshi mwanga wa Kristo kuna kasa. Na ni jukumu lako na jukumu langu tukaweze kujiweka katika misingi na katika uwepo wa Mungu ili tukaweze kubebeana mizigo na kutembea pamoja na wengine. Christ manifested love to those who are not loved. Christ did not have classes when he came here on, the, on earth. He made sure that he went to the least. He reached out the unreached. He was able to love those who are rejected. He was able 
to bear even those who were accused. I look at the people of that time when they found the adulterous woman, when she was found in the very act, and they came, all of them fuming and, and quoting what the law of Moses says and, and ask Jesus and challenging him, asking him, what does the law of Moses say? Yes, Jesus knew what the law said, but he looked at them and looked at their behavior and they saw that these people were just eaten. They did not have love that I have. So instead of answering them what they asked him, he started to write on the ground. And when he started to write on the ground, the Bible does not paraphrase what he was writing. But I, I tend to think that he started to think that uh, he started to write that if you have not murdered, be the first one to accuse her. If you have not done the adultery, be the first one to accuse her. And uh, as they continued to read what he was writing, the Bible says they left one by one and the woman was left alone standing. Uh, Jesus challenged her and asked and told her, where are your accusers? And Jesus did not engage her more. She told her, sin no more. That is a manifestation of the love I'm speaking to and about. That Jesus loved even sinners. If it were the Christians of today, and if they were at the position of Jesus, and this woman brought and brought in their in their courts and in their place of authority, I think they could just have said, "Finish with her," because we don't want kind of this kind of people in our midst. But I want to thank Jesus because He was full of love. Hallelujah, Buenas sana. That is being a blessing to others. Jesus manifested his love to this woman. And because of the love, the Bible says the woman went home justified because she was forgiven by the master who forgives sins. Hallelujah. Jesus lived a life of empathy. Yesu alikuwa ni mwenye huruma mwingi. Alikuwa anaonyesha huruma kwa maisha wale wengine. He used to empathize with those who are in need. To be empathetic is to feel others in their problems. To be empathetic is to make sure you reach others at their lowest point in their lives. Hallelujah. And so as Christians, God is calling us today that we be empathetic to one another. We empathize with one another. We bear with one another's burdens. Hallelujah. So that when one is crying, we cry together and we pray together. When one is in need, we stand together in that need so that we make their lives to be more beautiful. The early church was what it was because it carried one another's burdens. Hallelujah. Those who had sought what they had to bring at the feet of the apostles so that those who did not have could be able to be reached to and be met in their needs. Kwa hivyo, kama kanisa ni chukumu letu, ni chukumu lako na mimi, tuka bebeane mizigo, kwa kujaliana moja kwa mwingine. Bwana asifiwe sana. Moja wetu akija akisema nina ili jambo ni jukumu letu kama wapendwa tukasimame moja kwa mwingine. Usijifanye wazungu wanasema give a blind eye. Yaani ujifanye uoni. Uona wewe unaona lakini unajifanya uoni. Uwe baraka kwa mwenzako. So that we may complete the gospel. Hallelujah. Gospel without love. It's just a gospel of excitement. Hallelujah. Just to psych you so that you feel like I'm okay. But when one is loved, when one is embraced, even the, the issues in their lives start to erode away and they become who they should be. Hallelujah. As Christians, we are called to share God's love with the world and be a blessing to other people. Hallelujah. We are called to share God's love to the world and be a blessing to other people. Tumeitwa tukashirikisha upendo wa Mungu kwa wale ambao hawajafikiwa na kuwa baraka kwa wao pia. Hallelujah. Ukitazama na uone maisha ya wale tunawaita watoto ama watu wa mitaani. Hao watu ni watu wazuri. Lakini kwa sababu hawajashirikishwa upendo, wanangeuka wanakuwa wako na uzito maishani mwao na wanakuwa wako na kichaa 
So when they find you, in those times when there was no good security, they used to walk around with, 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 the, with the funny things in their pockets and, uh, and carrying very, very weird things uh, that if they find you coming to church like the way we are dressed, they make sure they smear you and they make sure you don't go to that church because they know you don't care about them. But they could threaten you first to see whether you will show some concern over them. Why? Because there is a vacuum in their hearts. There is a vacuum in life that is only filled by love. Hallelujah. Kuna, kuna, kuna jambo ambalo limeumbiwa binadamu. Ambalo linaweza kujazwa tuna upendo. Na kama hakuna upendo, ilo, ilo, ilo nafasi ama iyo pengo, itazidi kuitisha. And so that's why these people are either arrogant, they are rude, ama they are that rough. Because they are not shown love. But as a church, we are called to reach them and to reach out to them. If they are hungry, we give them food. If they are not love, we show them love. I'm not saying you go and sit with them in those, in those funny, funny areas. But if you come across them, it is your duty as a Christian to look for a way. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the ability to know how to handle every situation. So the Holy Spirit will give you a way out on how to reach out to them. Hallelujah. So empathize with those who are in need. Love those who are not loved. And show love even to others who are loved. Hallelujah. Have mercy on other people. Jesus was merciful. Jesus was full of mercy. Wherever he went, he, he manifested mercy. He manifested love. He man, manifested empathy to those who were at the lowest esteem. And so as a church, as a believer, you need to show mercy to other people. Hallelujah. To your friends, to your neighbors, to your family people, show mercy and love because you've been called to, so, to show that kind of, 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 of love. Hallelujah. We are called to forgive one another. You know, forgiveness has become a struggle. Forgiveness is not easy. And that's why Jesus emphasized on saying, if you are wronged, you need to forgive 70 times, 7 times a day. That is 490 times, which is not possible for anyone to wrong you that kind of magnitude of, 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 of number. And uh, this demonstrates and shows that forgiveness is, is, is not limited. Forgiveness should be our lifestyle. Every day should be a day of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Maybe it's, it's you who have been hurt. Maybe it's you who have been provoked. But the, the word of God is calling us that we be people of forgiveness. We forgive one another. In family level, we forgive one another. Those who are married, you forgive your husbands, you forgive your wives. Children, you forgive your parents. Family members, you forgive your brothers, your sisters. You, are, you, you forgive your neighbors. You forgive your employers. You forgive your enemies. You forgive one another because that is the commandment of God. Hallelujah. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that you forgive one another. Without forgiveness, there is no heaven. Hallelujah. Many Christians will miss heaven just because of that bit. Lack of forgiveness. And forgiveness can hinder you not to get to heaven. Not sin that we think about. The big sins we think about. Those ones the enemy knows, he cannot get you. But he knows if you have a heavy heart. If you have a heart that does not release, that is the footstool that he uses to tap you and to get you hold of you. So as a, as a Christian, tell the Lord to minister to you. Tell the Lord to fill you with, with forgiveness. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord to teach you on how to forgive others. Jesus being God himself was mocked and stripped and, and done so weird things. But because he was God by himself, he forgave. In the human nature that he came in, he was able to feel pain. He was able to feel discouraged at some point. But when the time for him came to be hanged on the cross, he told his father, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. That should be our prayer. That you should release and forgive others. When they hurt you, you forgive them. When they rebuke you, you just accept and you pray for them. 
when they molest you, you forgive them and tell the Lord to bless them. Hallelujah. The Bible has told us that we should not curse those who, 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 who molest us. And especially us who are in employment. If your employer harasses you over and over again, it can become a tendency for you to speak ill against them and to curse them. But the Bible says, do not curse them. Pray for them that the Lord will bless them. Because when they are blessed, they will become a blessing also to you. But when you curse them, you, you inflict even the pain to yourself. Because when you curse their business, when the business goes down, you lose the job. When you curse them, if you are employed by somebody and they go down in their income, you also lose the income. So the Bible gives us a way of helping ourselves that we bless those who persecute us. We don't curse them, we bless them. Hallelujah. When I son, our God is faithful and our God is able. Hallelujah. Whoever brings blessings will be enriched. And the one who has waters will himself be watered. Hallelujah. That is Proverbs 11 and 25. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched. And the one who waters will himself be watered. Hallelujah. This means that if you bring honor to the lives of people, you also be honored. Hallelujah. If you bring blessings to the lives of people, you also be blessed. And if you don't bring hope to the life of people, that hopelessness will affect you in one way. So we are called to bring hope to the lives of people, to be a blessing to other people, to bring honor to the lives of other people. Because the moment you walk in those three virtues, you are building a foundation for yourself. Hallelujah. When you make people to be honored, they will also cause you to be honored. Hallelujah. When you bless other people, you will also be blessed because their blessings will also speak towards your life. Hallelujah. God has made us in a unique way. He has made us with uniqueness. You are talented differently from how I'm talented. We are all uniquely made and they, and they, and they need together. So with your talent, you should be a blessing to other people. With, with the, what God has gifted you, you should be a blessing to other people. So the talents and the gifts that God has given us, they should be a platform for us to be a blessing to one another. Because we have been called to build one another as a church. Hallelujah. We are not called to criticize. We are not called just to, to critique and say what is not being done. We have been called to be a blessing to one another. To use our talents, to use our gifts, to use our even our resources to be a blessing to one another. So this morning as a church, I want us to understand for you to be a blessing to one another, give yourself to each other. If you have been called to serve, serve like you will not serve again. If you have been called to help, help like you will not help again. If you have been called to be a prayer warrior, pray like you will not pray again. Because if you are a prayer warrior and the other one is a giver and the other one is a praise and worshiper and the other one is a, 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 a person who brings hope and, uh, and also brings comfort in the midst of brethren, then we become a complete body. And we become a blessing to one another. God does not call the equipped. Hallelujah. But he equips the called. So don't sit back and say, I have not been called into the ministry of singing. I have not been called in the ministry of service. I have not been called in the ministry of encouragement. I have not been called in intercessory. God does not call the equipped. He calls the called one to equip them. And uh, for me to further praise this, I look at the man in the name of Moses. For God to use him to be a blessing to the children of Israel. Moses was a stammerer. Moses was a man who could not express himself. And uh, if you have come across people who stammer, they lose some words at some, at some point of, of, of expression. They lose even to give out what they were saying. But because God had seen and, and, and determined that it is through Moses 
that Israel will be blessed. He used the stammerer to be a blessing to the children of Israel. He equipped him because Moses was not equipped for the task of leadership. He came on board as a stammerer. But as he went on, God gave him the skill. God gave him the atras. God enabled him to communicate and to be able to lead as an effective leader. So are you sitting back and saying, I'm not able to lead? God is calling you to equip you. Are you sitting back and saying, I am not a prayer warrior? God is calling you to help you to pray. Are you sitting back and saying, I don't know what I'm called for? God is calling you to identify yourself in your calling. Hallelujah. So God does not call the equipped. He equips the called ones. Hallelujah. And the moment you are ready for the calling, God will equip you. God will help you to be a person of blessing to other people. Hallelujah. When God identified David and saw that there was a king in him, David was not equipped by then. David was a heart man. He was a boy who was in the forest taking care of the flock. And in the family setup, he was the least recognized in the family. Even the servant of God, as he went there to anoint the king, he started with the physique and with the, with the, with the men assessment. So when he went and, and looked at the, at the men who were in army at that time, the, the children who, were, who had been called to come and be anointed, he looked at, at the men who were in army and said, surely the anointed of the Lord has come. But God said, it's not that one. And they came and they came. And then it got to a point whereby Samuel was, was caught up. And, and he started to imagine, am I really in the right place? So he asked, is there any other one left? And with the mockery, they say, there is the small one who is tendering and taking care of the flock and the fields. And he says, bring him. And we see because I have said God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. So David comes from the forest. And he comes and he receives the anointing. Because God and identified him that he is going to be a blessing to the children of Israel. He is going to be a mighty leader. He is going to be a great king. He is going to be a deliverer in that country and at that time. My brother, my sister, you may be seated there and you are saying, I don't know what I'm called for. I don't know how I can be a blessing to one another. God is calling you and God is challenging you. Rise to your area of calling. Rise to a prayer, a point of prayer. And God will minister you and help you to define your calling. Hallelujah. Paul, we see him. He was a persecutor of the church. And he, he had no place in being a great apostle. But because God caused us to equip us, God had to transform him. At the point of transformation, God changed him. He changed a persecutor to a blesser. So from a point of persecuting the church, he became the greatest apostle. And all the letters that he has written, they are the most and the rich letters that the church can depend upon to be built up. My brother, my sister, I've come to encourage you this morning. You can be a blessing in the level that you are in. Hallelujah. You can be a blessing wherever you are. In your family setup, you can be a blessing. In your place of work, you can be a blessing. In the, in the environment and in the, in the environments that you live in, you can be a blessing. Ustarajie na ungojie kuwa mchungaji, diyo seme utakuwa wabaraka. Uchungaji ni zuri. Lakini atuwezi kuwa uchungaji zote. Us, usigoje kuwa praise and worship leader. Ndiyo useme wakati nitaaza ku lead praise and worship. Ndiyo nitakuwa baraka. Even coming and arranging the church is a blessing. Even going to pray for the sick in hospital is a big blessing. Actually, that is the only ministry that has no competitors. Hallelujah. And do you know, if you have been called into intercessory and into area of prayer, and you go visiting people in hospital and praying. Do you know your investment is greater than even those, those great offices that you aspire? Because when you go and pray for someone who is sick and they get healed, you save their life. 
And when you go there, you go there as an evangelist. You evangelize to their lives and they are saved and they become the people God wants them to be. So there is no room for sitting back and saying, I don't know my area of calling. Identify yourself in an area you can become a blessing. Hallelujah. I, I, I saw my grand, grandfather at those times. He was a pastor. But every day he could go to hospital, pray for people, every day, pray for people. So even up to today, people remember him and say, Pastor so and so used to pray for sick people in this hospital every day. So his actions is not there, but they're still speaking. They are speaking because he planted a good seed. And at those times when the people who are there as administrators, as 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 nurses, as doctors, they were feeling that there is someone who is making their work easier because their divine caused the divine. Hallelujah. Healing is a divine thing. And so, doctors, they don't have the divine. Doctors have the skill. But the divine can only be called by you and me. Because healing is a bread for the children of God. And so, because you know, healing is connected to Christ. Healing is not connected to, to doctors. Doctors are there to just to cure, to help you into coming out of the symptoms. And the healing is given by God. So the moment you sit back and you don't go and visit the sick, and you are saying, I don't know my calling, then when will you know your calling? The moment you are sitting back and you don't attempt even to go and visit the less fortunate, thank God to our, to our youth, God bless you. They went and they were able to visit the orphanage, the children's home. And do you know, that is where the ministry is. That is where the greatest ministry is. The Bible says the true and, uh, and the recognized form of worship that God honors is when we go to visit the orphans, the widows, and the needy. Three categories of people. It's not when you come to visit me as your pastor. It is an honor to visit your pastor. It is good to visit your pastor because he, he stands at a place of honor. But it is more honorable in the hierarchy of God's recognition for the one who has gone to a children's home to share at their agonies than the one who has come to visit a pastor. Hallelujah. Am I getting complicated? I'm trying to enlighten you so that you don't sit back and say, I don't know where I fit. Not going to the children's home with, with a picker full of items. Even going there with a hard bang and with a, with, a, with, a, with a shopping bag of two bread and two milk is a blessing. Hallelujah. Because you don't know how they slept and what they are going through. So even when you go with a bag of maize, a, a maize flour bag, that you've made a meal for them. So that is being a blessing to them at the point of need. So as a church, we need to rise and be found in a place of calling, a place of influence, a place of blessing, a place whereby we can change a life of somebody and be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. When you become a blessing to others, one thing that comes into your life, serving allows us to experience God presence in new ways. Hallelujah. Serving others allows us to experience God's presence in new ways. When you are serving other people, you experience God in new ways. New ways how? The things you have been struggling with, God helps you to achieve them in a more and easy way than you, do, you don't know. Because God commands a blessing when you fulfill his word according to his standard. Hallelujah. Serving increases our faith. Hallelujah. When we become servants, our faith is increased. You, you know, God refused new potential in you and in us. And through his power, he is able to work in us and through us. So when, 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 you, when you serve others, your faith is increased. God manifests himself through you. God works through you and also in you. When you pray for the sick, through your prayer, 
the person who is sick is healed. So God is lifting your faith. Because when you visit somebody who was sick and you pray with them, you've given them hope. You've given them life back. So when you walk out and you come again and they tell you, when we prayed yesterday, today I feel I'm more better. Then your faith is lifted. Hallelujah. So when we serve and when we become a blessing to others, our faith is increased. Hallelujah. Serving others helps us to be more like Jesus. Hallelujah. I started by saying Jesus was a person or rather was an initiator of blessings in the lives of people. Jesus brought hope. Jesus showed empathy. Jesus brought hope and life to people. So when we serve others, we become like him, like Jesus. We are giving life to people. We are bringing hope to the hopeless. We are bringing peace to those who do not have peace. So even sharing out and, and being there to pray with one another is a great virtue. We are becoming a deposit of hope to others. Bwana asifiwe sana. Kwa hivyo mpendwa usikae chini na useme sijielewi sijui ni wapi naweza tumika. Kuna eneo kubwa lako la utumishi ambalo unaweza ingia na ukaleta utofauti katika maisha wengi. Haleluya. Kutembelewa ngojo hospitali, kutembelewa ngojo nyumbani manyumbani mwao, kutembelea mayatima na wajane, kutembelea wale ambao wajiwezi, kusaidia maskini, kutenda matendo ya ya upendo. Haleluya. You see the the Holy Church was the greatest church because everybody was met at their point of needs. The widows, they had the dockers in the midst. Who saw the needs of the widows? And she started just to make sweaters for them. And because of the good works, the Bible says, when dockers died, these widows went to Peter crying and said, this lady used to make sweaters for us and we are so, so sad because of her. And because of that, Peter, under the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit, was able to call back dockers to life. Hallelujah. I don't know what people will miss you for. Oh, when you go, they will celebrate and say, a good riddance. You know, you know, there are people, when you lose them, you say, oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Because they, there are people who are a thorn in the flesh. You know, Paul at some point had a thorn in his flesh. And uh, when he prayed for the thorn to come out, <laughs> he was told, May the grace be sufficient. So even those who are thorn in our flesh, at some point they will not go away. What you need is grace. May the grace of God help you. To bear with them, to walk with them, and also to walk with them in your life. So at some point, you need to have an impact in the life of other people. Uweze kusababisha jambo ambalo watu wakikukosa njume moja. Juma pili moja, wanasema, eh, leo nimesikia, nimekosa kitu ya maana sana. Hallelujah. Lakini usikue, hata tukikosa mwezi mzima, hata tunakumbushana. We ulimuona lini mwisho. We ulimuona lini mwisho. Kwa sababu, auna impact. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is, be a somebody who is effective. Hallelujah. Ili tukitana maombi, tuseme yule dugu wabaye ufika kwanza. Leo tuja, tuja muona. Ili tukisema tuende ujilisti, tuseme ya kwamba yule dada abaye katika kikundi chetu, ndia nafikia watu kwa jia rahisi, atuja kuwa nae. Ili katika uimbaji, tuseme, mm -mm, leo siku fikiwa vizuri kwa sababu ni mkosa hizo. Kwa sababu you need to have an impact in your life. Hallelujah. Don't just be somebody who is there just feeling days, waiting for the good day to come. And to have a good of, a day of bye-bye. You know, there are those people who just exist. They don't live. But they are not here. We will live, and we are living to be impactful. But don't walk in the counsel of those people who have no impact. If you find yourself in a, in a team of negative people, you are cutting yourself a disaster. Because the negativity will creep in your life. The negativity will eat in your positive side. So run away from the camp of the negative people. Why am I saying so? We see in the Bible 
when God wanted to use Gideon. God looked at the people who were coming to serve as the soldiers of Gideon at that time. And he looked at them, they were 32,000. He looked at 30,000 people. They were full of fear. They were full of doubt. They were full of negativity. So he told Gideon to tell these people, those who are fearful and those who are not ready, just to go back. Because God does not work with cowards. God does not work with, with negative people. God does not work with lazy people. Hallelujah. So if on Sunday is the day you sleep up to 10, you better change your ways. Hallelujah. Leo ni sema nafundisha. Ni kiubiri tu. Kama jumapili, ndiyo unalala mpaka saane, you are out of order. Kwa sababu gani? Kama Monday to Friday is Saturday, you wake up at 4, 5 to beat the traffic so that your boss by 8 sees you in the office. Then how comes that where the foundation of your life is based, you are only seen late every day. You are not doing a service to yourself. There are battles that you have to fight on your knees. There are battles that you love to fight yourself. Hallelujah. There are things that you have to cut off yourself so that as you come to us and we help you to pray, you've already won the battle by yourself. So the moment you sleep and you don't pray, then you are building a generation behind you, a, a, a generation of laziness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leo ni ule mchungaji wenu tu. Aja badilika. Nataka kukusaidia wewe. Let me tell you, as I grew up, when I went to visit my grand, grandfather, at 4 a.m., 4 a.m., he used to be up singing, worshipping, and praying up to 6 a.m. Then we used to wonder, kwa nini ubabu yetu uamuka mapema hivi? Na anatuamusha, anatuambia mkeni tuombe, tunaomba, tunalala, tukiomba hapo, anatuambia ni sawa, rudini mlale. But there's something he was inculcating in our spiritual life. He was depositing the prayer life. So that when we grow up, we also inculcate it in our children. Then came my mother, and I found the same habits in her. That every day she used to wake us up, we pray. And I used to refuse to pray at that time. Because I didn't understand why we are praying. So I used to resist. But God is faithful that I resisted, but I was caught up. And put out of the resistance. Now I'm the one who is now pulling you out of resistance. Hallelujah. So when she used to teach us how to pray every day, Morning, evening, I used to wonder, Kwanini maombi ni mingi namlai. So today, I'm the one now who is crying foul that you are not praying. Because I want you on the day to come to be a blessing to others. So that you may break those, those generational issues. Those things that we cannot understand and know. You know, I don't know your history. It is only you who knows. I don't know where you come from. It is you who knows where you come from. The battles that you fight in your village, in your family circles, you are the only one who knows. So, the moment you become a prayerful person, those battles, they become easier for you because you have an army that is fighting together with you. So, become a blessing to your people by being a prayerful person, by being a prayer champion, by being a prayer warrior because prayer works and it has worked for us. Hallelujah. Prayer is the only key. Jesus did not give us another key. He said pray and pray always. Akusema, soma neno na usome neno kila wakati. Tunapaswa kusoma neno. But he insisted that pray in and out of season. Why? Because it is the only key that connects you to the heavenlies. It is the only key that calls the divine. It is the only key that can change the atmosphere that you are living in. Hallelujah. So don't you know prayer, my brother, my sister. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is the only thing that nobody can, 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 can deny you or snatch you from having a prayer walk or prayer time in your own schedules. So make sure that you pray 
in and out of season. Pray in the spirit. Pray day by day. Be in the prayer cells that we have established for you. Serving others gives you a sense of purpose. Hallelujah. Serving others gives you a sense of purpose. Sense of purpose is a sense of belonging. A sense of, of identity. A sense of ownership. A sense of saying, I have participated in this course and I can see the results. Hallelujah. Kama auja wajibika katika maisha wengine. Auta wai kuwa na sababu ya kusherekea ushidi wao. Hallelujah. I thank God for the team that was praying for the candidates. When they succeeded, all of them, when they all passed to go to university, I could see the, 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 the joy and the gladness in the team because there was a sense of purpose that was achieved in that team. And uh, there was an identity identifying themselves with the success because in the spirit we were able to make sure that our children penetrate and succeed. But if you are seated back and you do not participate, there was no sense of purpose for you because you did not carry you did not carry the burden at that time. So even praying for others gives you a sense of purpose. Ministering to others through evangelism gives you a sense of purpose. Visiting others in hospital and we should make it a habit here in this church that when you hear either of us is hospitalized, either of their people is hospitalized, go and visit them. Hallelujah. There is no great evangelism like going to hospital, visiting someone who is there looking around and fearful and not, not knowing whether tomorrow it will work for him or to come out. But the moment you visit them, there are deposits of hope that you bring into their lives. So let us make it our habit that we visit one another when any of us is in need, when any of us is in hospital, when any of us needs to be encouraged. Hallelujah. You don't know when someone is seated in that house for a week alone, having no one to come and tell them, God loves you. We are there praying together. They get devastated. But the moment they see you and see me, then their hearts are lifted. Hallelujah. Serving helps us to be more and more productive in our lives. Hallelujah. The more you serve, the more you become more productive. The more you sit back, the more you start to mince yourself and say, Mimi si chochote. Sijui mimi tatumika aje. But the more you serve, the more you identify yourself and the more you become productive. Hallelujah. Serving helps make the world a happier place for one another. Hallelujah. Serving helps make the world a happier place for one another. You know, when you serve one another in our agonies, in our distresses, we, we get our burdens lifted and the, the, the things that were troubling you, they become lesser and easier and you are more happier. You are more confident. Hallelujah. 